Amen, amen. God bless you, family of God. It's your brother Sam Rock, and we're here on The Blaze, the Bible study, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, sharp, right here at soulwinnerswithaz.org. The tune in, the MySpace, the Twitter, the Facebook, the tune in app. Amen. And um, with you here sharing the gospel, the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bible studies are very important for those who want to mature and grow in the faith. A Christian, how to be a Christian is to grow in the faith, renew your mind, read, read the word, memorize scripture, get into Bible studies, join and be a member and a doer of the Bible in a Christ-centered, Holy Ghost-filled church. Make sure you're involved in the community, um, reaching people with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So it's good to be a part of the Forever Family, knowing that one day you're going to meet the Lord and Savior face to face. And one day you're going to be re reunited with people who have served the Lord and have went home to be with the Lord in heaven. One day we're all going to meet our Savior face to face. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. So be encouraged. God got you. Amen. Be encouraged. Tonight on The Blaze, I just want to encourage somebody. God has you covered. So be encouraged. Amen. If you are going through issues in your life, join the crowd. We all have issues. We all go through things. But let me remind you that God has us all covered. In the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 16 and 17, the Bible is clear. It says, May our Lord Jesus Christ and God our Father, who loved us and in his special favor gave us everlasting comfort and good hope, comfort your hearts and give you strength in every good thing you do and say. God has you covered, so be encouraged. Father, I ask, Lord Jesus, right now, that you will cover this Bible study by your blood, by your Holy Spirit, that you will engage every single listener, every single person who has a mind to think things out, that you will speak to their mind, speak to their spirit, speak to their soul, and that there will be transformation, deliverance, salvation, and all that that goes in when it comes to your Holy Spirit moving upon a thing or upon a person or upon a movement, Lord God. Let your spirit flow freely during this Bible study tonight. And I ask, Lord Jesus, that there will be many, many, many testimonies and people will testify of your goodness and they will be encouraged and strengthened tonight as they hear your word concerning encouragement. Access all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, my Lord, my Savior, my Master, my King, and my Father in heaven. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's get into it. Be encouraged. Amen. Tonight I was doing a whole bunch of uh, ministry work online. I'm still not done, not even halfway done. I have some events coming up soon that I have deadlines for. So in my decision making, I said, well, should I broadcast live and get into the word or should I keep on working? And of course, when it comes to work or the word, amen, I kind of put them together, but I want to always get involved in what God has. Amen. God wants me to be encouraged. God doesn't want me to be discouraged. God wants me to be. He impresses us. He doesn't depress us. Amen. He doesn't oppress. He doesn't dismiss us. He doesn't depress, oppress, suppress. But no, God is impressive. And because we're impressed by God, amen, and what he does, he amazes us daily, we stay encouraged because we know that our God has us covered. He has us covered. Amen. So how can I encourage others? Have you ever thought of that? Have you ever asked that question? How can you be an encouragement to somebody else? I know God is encouraging. Amen. If you know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you know what I'm talking about. You know that anytime, anywhere, whenever, whatever, however, amen, God is there. He's there with you. He will never leave you. He will never fail you. He will never put you to shame. He will never cast you out. He will never uh, embarrass you. None of that. God has you covered, so be encouraged. There's a day coming and very soon, if you're not already there, whether you're going to go through a storm, you're going through a storm now, or you just got out of a storm. The day is coming when a storm will be present in your life. 
problems, issues, finances, um, sickness, disease, death in the family, relational problem, whatever the case may be, God is with you. He has you covered. In the book of Ezra, Old Testament, the book of Ezra, chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. And of course, I'm reading the word of God inspired by the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Because without the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, this word that we call the gospel, the Bible, the Holy Scriptures, it won't even do anything. There will be no power in the word of God if you just read it as a novel or if you just read it as a story. If you have the Holy Spirit of God in you, then these um, scriptures and these words that we're going to read will just be applied into your life and it will amplify the Father who sent the word. Amen. So when you read the word of God, make sure that you know that this word is alive, active, sharper than any double-edged sword, able to pierce, amen, through our whole mindset down to the to the bone marrow, amen. So Ezra chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. At that time, the prophets Haggai and Zechariah, son of Edo, prophesied in the name of the God of Israel to the Jews in Judah and Jerusalem, Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel and Jeshua, son of Jehozadak, responded by beginning the task of rebuilding the temple of God in Jerusalem. And the prophets of God were with them and helped them. Sometimes when it comes to encouragement, it's going to involve getting a person involved once again in a productive work. At that time, there's going to come a time that you're going to be at that time. And you're going to need someone in your life, prophetic voices in your life. You might be your pastor, might be your friends, somebody filled up with the Holy Spirit of God to prophesy, to have a prophetic word over your life. Amen. And you're going to be responding by doing the task that God has called you to do. Amen. So sometimes encouragement involves getting a person involved once again in productive work. So you can encourage somebody to say, come on, man, don't don't stop what you're doing. Some people started something. God, God has started something in people's lives. And we need to make sure, you know, God holds us to his word where he says, whatever he starts, he shall finish. So we know that we could be encouraged when we get somebody else. We could be an encouragement, I should say, when we get somebody else back involved in a productive work. If you're a minister and you're knocked down right now, amen, in the name of Jesus, get back up. Brush yourself off. Get back into fellowship. Get back into the word of God. Pray and ask God for forgiveness, whatever the case might be. Amen. And get back into the work that God has called you to do. Amen. Be encouraged. God got you covered. Be encouraged. Go into the book of Acts now, chapter 11, verse 23. The book of Acts, chapter 11, verse 23. When he arrived... And saw this proof of God's favor. He was filled with joy. And he encouraged the believers to stay true to the Lord. Amen. So we see. Barnabas was sent to Antioch. And when he got to where he was supposed to be. Because God will send you to a place where you're supposed to be. He saw the proof of God's favor. Amen. He was being blessed. He had God's favor. The anointing of Jesus. The anointing of the Holy Spirit was with this man. And he went through the town and he was like blown away by the favor that God gave him. Amen. And because he was favored by God, he was filled with joy. And the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. So the joy of the Lord was his strength at this time. And he encouraged the believers to stay true in the Lord. When he saw a believer in Christ, the follower of the way, he said, be encouraged. God is with you. Keep on going. Get up. Don't stop. Don't give up. Don't give into the world system. Give glory to God and keep on going. Be encouraged. Amen. He was filled with joy and he encouraged the believers to stay true to the Lord. A lot of people right now, we need we need a uh, Holy Ghost boost right now in the name of Jesus, especially in our country. With the culture going the way it is. I've seen something and I heard something today. Um, that we're going to speak about on a Sell Out Radio show live on Sunday. Amen. Something with the gospel rap music. I, I knew it was coming and it's here. I don't want to give it away. But something is not right in the gospel rap industry. And it's coming our way. 
Amen. And it's coming fast. And the culture has somehow influenced um, the gospel, rap industry or ministry, whatever you want to call it, and has seeped in. But I'm going to be filled with joy right now. And I'm going to stay encouraged. And I'm going to encourage the believers that are in the mission field of this hip-hop world and this hip-hop culture that they're in. And I'm going to tell you, if you're a gospel rap minister, stay encouraged. Be filled with the joy of the Lord. Be encouraged. Stay true to the Lord. And stay true to the Lord's word. Amen. That's all I'm going to say on that. Tune in on Sunday, soulwinnerswithaz.org, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Amen. And you'll get the rest of this um, message, something I found out. So in the book of Acts, we see that Barnabas is known as the great encourager. That's what his name means, um, son of encouragement. Amen. Barnabas' encouragement of John Mark helped him become a great leader in the church. Encouragement is more than just shallow, hollow praise. It's more than that. It's urging others to hold fast to the principles of faith. Because if you just pray somebody, hey, great job. You did a good part in the instrument on the worship team. Um, you sang a great chorus. Um, you were good at ushering. You greeted well. If you could give people a praise, there's nothing wrong with that. Give them a praise. But make sure that praise is filled because you know that the praise will lead somebody to the principles of the faith that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you're going to give somebody praise, first let's give honor and glory all due to the Lord Jesus Christ. And then when you praise somebody for doing something in the kingdom of God, for the kingdom of God, make sure that you that they also hold fast to the principles of the faith. Because a lot of people are doing things and they call them good things. But a good thing is only good if it's a God thing. Because God is the only one who is good. So we have to be careful. But we have to also encourage people. A lot of people are down and out right now. Financially, um, ministerially. Um, churches are um, struggling financially. Um, there's ministers of the gospel that are being overwhelmed right now by the culture and the culture war. Um, the so-called so -called culture war. And they're discouraged. So we have to turn it around and encourage people to keep on going. Amen. Be like Barnabas, the son of encouragement. Amen. And continue to go um, to the leaders of the church. Pray for our leaders in the church. Pray for our leaders in the government. Pray for our, our youth pastors and youth leaders and all of that. Pray for the body of Christ. Pray for your brother and your sister. Pray for your neighbors. Pray for your family members, your sons, your daughters, your uncles, your aunts, your mom, your dad. Pray for your relationship to be holy and righteous before the Lord. And encourage somebody to keep on going. And urge them to hold fast to the principles of our faith. Amen. The principles of, of our faith is based upon the fact that Jesus Christ came from heaven to earth to show us the way from the earth to the cross, uh, from my debt to pay, from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. And we have to continue to lift up the name of Jesus and encourage others to do the same and to just hold fast to the truth of God, to his word, to his principles of the faith of what we call Christ followers, as what we call Christianity and what we call just followers of the way and the truth and the life. Amen. Very important. Now let's go to um, Philemon. I don't know if it's Philemon or Philemon. I'm going to say Philemon. Philemon is a very small book, but it's in the New Testament. Philemon chapter 1 verse 11. Chapter 1 verse 11. Now there's a, a person that they speak of. Amen. Um, the name is Onesimus. Onesimus means useful. This person's name means useful. Amen. Isn't that something? So Onesimus hasn't been of much use <laughs> to you in the past. Isn't that, isn't that funny that the man's name is, or it could be a woman or a man. I'm not sure. I didn't do a study of who this person was. He's not, he or she is not mentioned a lot in the scriptures, but the name Onesimus means useful. 
But look what it says. Onesimus hasn't been of much use to you in the past. Or oh, he's a he. Because the Bible says, but now he is very useful to both of us. Showing trust in a person, when you say that you trust somebody, that's a great source of encouragement to him or her. Amen? Especially to youth. When you trust the youth with something, you're encouraging them. You're telling them, hey, you could do this. I'm trusting you. I'm counting on you. It even works with youth leaders. It works with young adults. It works with young children. Now, we have to be mindful and use judgment and use discernment of what kind of task or what kind of usefulness or what kind of uh, trust you're going to give certain individuals. Now, I wouldn't necessarily trust a notorious thief um, to deliver a hundred dollars to the bank you're right would you but when they get to a point of conversion and they're changed and renewed that same thief that God takes a hold of that person's heart could be trustworthy now because you see a turn you see repentance you see see a new man a new woman in Christ and when you show trust in that person that's going to be a great source great source of encouragement to that person so be mindful of that as well amen so we see Onesimus which means useful wasn't so useful before in the past but there's other parts of the Bible that says you we're not going to live in our past we're going to move forward and press on to the mark that was set before us. We're going to run the race. We're going to endure to the end. Amen. So when you see people enduring to the end. Amen. They become trustworthy. And when you trust in a person. You encourage them. You encourage that person. So keep that in mind. Next time you are reminded of someone who's discouraged right now. But you know they're trying their best. They're doing good. Uh they might be in high school and they have good grades on a roll and all that stuff, yet they're discouraged. Well, if you know they're doing good in school, you could trust them by helping you out. Maybe do an essay, help you with some math, help you count the offering, something like that. So that way they know that you trust them and then they start getting encouraged because somebody noticed that they were excelling in an area in their life and that you could and trust that person it might be somebody with computer skills or the media ministry or someone who uh, just picks up after everybody at the end of church or at the, in your house that's always cleaning when they visit trust them with a task trust them to do something and they will be encouraged amen that's a good nugget right there i'm getting something out of that one philippians chapter one let's go to philippians chapter one verse six Apostle Paul is talking to the church at Philippi and he says, And I am sure that God, who began the good work within you, will continue his work until it is finally finished on that day when Christ Jesus comes back again. Apostle Paul is sure. I'm sure as well. I hope you're sure as well that God began a good work within you and will continue his work until it's finally finished on that day. It's going to be a that day when Jesus Christ cracks the sky open and comes back and every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. On that day, Christ Jesus will come back. And when he comes back, what he started in you will be finished. Will be finished for those who endure. Amen. You might be struggling. You might be having doubts. You might be having issues with your faith. Your walk might not be right. You might be in some kind of fornication. You might be in some kind of adultery. You might be in some kind of addictive behavior. But I'm here to tell you, be encouraged. God got you covered. Keep on going. Get back up. Turn from your wickedness. Turn to his righteousness. Because you know for sure that he began to work within you, right? When you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your 
personal Lord and Savior. If you have done that, God started a work in your life and he will complete that work till it is finally finished. So that way, when he cracks the sky and comes back, he won't be your judge. He'll be your Lord and Savior. He won't be the one that says, you know what? I didn't know you. Um, be gone from me. But he'll be the one that says, well done, my good and faithful servant. Amen. And he'll welcome you into the kingdom of God. That's what you want. That's what the endurance is all about. So encouragement is affirming others and the work they are doing for God. You're doing a good work for God. Amen. I'm going to encourage you. Keep on going. Whatever ministry you're in, whether it's helps ministry, if you're helping the pastor, armor bearers, uh, serving food or picking up after people, like I said before, be encouraged because you're doing a work that is going to be fulfilled, amen, for the kingdom purpose in your life and for others. Use this acronym, JOY. J is for Jesus, O is for others, Y is for you. Keep that perspective. First is Jesus, then is others, then it's you. If you keep that perspective while you're out there affirming others, and they'll be encouraged, and they will know that God is doing something in you, and that God is doing something in them. And then there's affirmation there. You're lifting up. Spirits are being lifted. Amen. And as you're lifting somebody else and encouraging somebody else, God has you covered. So be encouraged. Amen. Joshua chapter 24, verses 2 to 13. I'm going to try to be quick with this because there's a lot of scriptures here. Joshua chapter 24, verses 2 to 13. Joshua said to the people, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. So he's speaking prophetic. He's speaking under the unction of the Spirit of God. And he says, your ancestors, including Terah, the father of Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates River, and they worshipped other gods. But I look, but I took your ancestor Abraham from the land beyond the Euphrates and led him into the land of Canaan. I gave him many descendants through his son Isaac. To Isaac, I gave Jacob and Esau. To Esau, I gave the hill country of Seir. While Jacob and his children went down into Egypt. Then I sent Moses and Aaron. And I brought terrible plagues on Egypt. And afterward I brought you out as a free people. But when your ancestors arrived at the Red Sea. The Egyptians closed, closed after you with chariots and horses. When, when you cried out to the Lord. I put darkness between you and the Egyptians. I brought the sea crashing down on the Egyptians, drowning them with your very own eyes. You saw what I did. Then you lived in the wilderness for many years. Finally, I brought you into the land of the Amorites on the east side of the Jordan. They fought against you, but I gave you victory over them, and you took possession of their land. Then Balak, son of Zippor, king of Moab, started a war against Israel. He asked Balaam, son of Beor, to curse you. But I would not listen to him. Instead, I made Balaam bless you. And so I rescued you from Balak. When you crossed the Jordan River and came to Jericho, the men of Jericho fought against you. There were also many others who fought you, including the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Girgashites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. But I gave you victory over them. Verse 12. And I sent hornets ahead of you to drive out two kings of the Amorites. It was not your swords or bows that brought you victory. I gave you land you had not worked for, and I gave you cities you did not build, the cities in which you are now living in. I gave you vineyards and olive groves for food, though you did not plant them. Wow. God got you covered. God is telling these people that he did all of that, that he was responsible for all of that. He gave them the victory. He made the sea devour their enemy. Imagine you're going to a dead end, a sea, and your enemy is right behind you, closing in fast, and you cry out to God, and he makes a way out for you. 
and then he smashes the enemy and wipes them out. God makes sure that you know who gave you the victory. Jesus Christ gives you the victory over all things. So encouragement can come from reviewing God's past blessings. You can review the past blessings that God has done for you. When you're to a point where you're looking at your fridge and there's no food in it. But start praising God because he blessed you to that very point and he still continues to bless you. If you trust in him and realize that he blessed you before, he'll bless you again. That if your bank account is running low and there's more bills, there's more uh, bills than there is for the month, there's no more money, God blessed you before, he'll bless you again. When a sickness tries to come into your body and take over you, remember that God gave you health before, he'll give you health again. When he healed you from sickness and disease, he could do it in the past and he could do it in the future. Amen. He's not done with you. When you're facing opposition and your enemy's closing in fast, he gave you victory before, he could give you victory again. Encouragement can come from reviewing God's past blessings. Now, we're not supposed to live on the past glory, although it's amazing when you look back and you see how far you've come since the day you received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. It's been on and popping. It's been good times. It's been bad times. It's been trials and tribulations. But all through it, as you look back, you say, man, I'm still standing. I'm moving forward. I'm not going back to that mess. I'm becoming a message in progress. I'm not going back to that sin. I'm going to the Lord Jesus Christ in a position of victory. You're thinking of the things in the past. God blesses. Amen. He encourages. He fights wars. Amen. He, he blesses your ancestry. Amen. He gets you out from the enemy's camp. He gives you land. He, he does all these things. Amen. People try to curse you and God turns that curse around to be a blessing. He rescues us. He, uh, he allows us to cross to other land. Amen. Uh, he gives victory over our enemies. He'll send even hornets ahead of you to drive out kings that are against you. And we have to realize it wasn't our own strength that we got this far. It was the strength of the Lord. Amen. Working through us. Giving us an opportunity to be in encouraged. Encouragement comes sometimes from reviewing God's past blessings. Let me give you one more. Hope you're being encouraged right now because I know I am. Job chapter 29 verse 24. The story of Job is tremendous. Job had it all, lost it all, and then God returned it. <laughs> and he, he returned it in plenty. Amen. Um, I'm just shortchanging the story. Read the book of Job for yourself. This man went through a lot. He was attacked physically. He lost all his children, lost wealth. Um, his own wife told him to curse God and die. He was being counseled by um, his friends that were telling him all kind of crazy stuff. But in the book of Job, chapter 29, verse 24, the Bible says, When they were discouraged, I smiled at them. My look of approval was precious to them. Sometimes when you're going through something and it's crazy and you're going through all kind of issues, problems, people are talking um, down to you and nobody's seeing your dream, nobody's seeing your vision and nobody wants to back you up. Remember this, sometimes just a smile is a great encouragement. Sometimes when you just smile, take a picture, put it on Facebook with a big old smile, and people are like, how, are they, how is he smiling? How is she smiling? After they went through all of that, how are they smiling? And people will notice your smile. And because you're smiling through all the mess that you might be going through, somebody else, that'll cause somebody else to smile. They'll be encouraged. They'll be encouraged just because you smiled. That's a great encouragement to people. A lot of people need to lighten up and live. Smile a little bit. Stop being so angry. Stop being so tense. Get to know the God who wants to bless you. Get to know the God who wants to put a big old smile on your face. Get to know the God that could deliver you, that can heal you. 
that can rescue you from every single enemy, every single disease, and that he can give you a way out from every single temptation, from any addiction, amen, that can free you up from your lustful thinking, that can give you a victory over sin and over death, amen. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't know him yet? Get to know him tonight. Ask Jesus to forgive you right now, right where you're at, to forgive you of your sin, and then to send his spirit to live in you, and then you confess back to God and to your friends, your family members, and whoever, that now Jesus Christ is your Lord and your Savior. And Jesus, God, the Lord Almighty, the Word that became flesh, that Jesus, he will live in in you and work through you by way of the Holy Spirit and so your victory is a reality. Amen. So I hope you were encouraged. Stay encouraged. Amen. Until the next time you hear my voice. Lord willing. Amen. Lord willing, I'll be still encouraged. Amen. And remember, after the day is all done and everything's all said and everything happened, stay encouraged because you know that God is good. Peace.